In the first installment of this series analyzing Grappa Baki, I discussed the importance that the characteristic anatomical accuracy of Itagaki's art held for the narrative ability of the series to express its distorted realism through drawings. Today, we'll be discussing the way the author articulates the bodies he creates, from panel to panel, giving them life via dynamic motions. Every manga, by definition, deals with movement. The entire essence of the medium revolves around performing the illusion of spatial evolution to give the characters of its stories the ability to convince the reader that they are indeed moving. When you think about it in terms of FPS, most shonen stop out at 4 or 5 frames per second, which shouldn't be enough to invoke the complexity of human locomotion in a brain whose eyes are really only looking at still pictures. And yet, it does so beautifully, with no other manga more expert at that practice than Grappler Baki. While his heart style and narrative pensions are questionable in many aspects, there is no denying that Itagaki has entirely mastered the science of movement, with every page showcasing a level of understanding of the human body and its relationship to gravity that far exceeds most martial arts series. There are three distinct tiers to this craft each one encompassing the others to an extent and seeking to tell a visual story as convincingly as possible without the use of dialogue. Using information conveyors that remain entirely abstract, it still speaks to our collective imagination due to the universal nature of its markers. Take for example this simple panel. Even though this should only be seen as a static scene representing two men standing in front of one another during a bout, we can distinctly tell that Baki is the one on the offensive, and that he has just delivered two punches to Toba, most likely a 1-2. We can also tell that these hits had close to no effect on the giant, while still having enough power to make him topple backwards slightly. All of these subtle inklings that participate in creating the unspoken narrative of this fight were conveyed to us by one drawing. We were able to extrapolate an entire exchange of strikes composed of several movements from simple details such as the blurriness of Baki's blows, the impacts on Toba's core, and the acceleration spikes on his back that indirectly tell us what we're looking at. All of these information conveyors take place within a still shot of characters whose joint positioning, facial expression, and center of gravity all participate in creating a canvas on which these markers can express the significance of these movements to the reader. This would be the first tier, that I will call movement execution. Every tier shares similar characteristics and aims for the same narrative goal, but they proceed to it in different fashions. This one seeks to represent a movement that just got executed or is about to end, with its repercussions either in full effect or kicking off like this panel of Dopo hitting Yujiro demonstrates. We understand that a punch has been delivered, as we witness the fist of the Karate Master flying back and forth, and the body of the Ogre recalling back in pain. A look at their foot positioning also indicates that one is on the offensive, while the other is retreating. You don't even really need to look at their upper bodies to understand the flow of the action. This is especially useful to represent the aftermath of a technique and the effects it had on the receiving party. Picture a kick so powerful that the victim is still flying through the air or wriggling in pain after completion of the move. This is the type of visuals that this one type of dynamic drawings seek to represent. Movement in Grappabaki is not just the action of attacking, it is also the effects those attacks have on the unfortunate recipient and the way their bodies react to the aggression. Because of how dedicated the series is to the portraying of lifelike biomechanics, we can tell that a character that just got his head twisted with enough vigor that they're kept spinning is very unlikely to ever participate in any activity that doesn't involve a wheelchair. While this tear can sometimes convey the power of a blow so severe that it ended the fight before the body of the victim could even land, it is most often utilized to connect two action scenes together. Its goal is to help the reader picture what the motion that led to the end result must have been like, and the spatial displacements that had to take place for it to reach this conclusion. By placing the focus of the representation at the end of the action, it implies that the next panel will contain a reaction from the victim of the attack, either passive in defeat or active in revolt. This offers a brief reprieve from the non-stop pummeling that often turns shonen fights into poorly choreographed messes. 
giving time for the action to breathe offers a moment of contemplation that gives the significance of a particular arc of movement space to land. This time lag trick is taken up a notch by our second tier of representation, that I will call movement prediction. Its ability to suspend the action for a brief instant and recenter its actors within the frame of the fight is key to keep the reader involved. Unlike the first type we just discussed, this one requires the use of several panels, but the bulk of the action still happens in one frame. The goal is to present several movements happening in quick succession, which are always linked to one another by causality, as the order of events has to make sense, at the risk of confusing the reader and making the movements impossible to read. It can also showcase the reaction of the character at the receiving end of the blow, or the expression of the one delivering it. If you took one look at this panel, it would be easy to mistake the two men together and not understand that the one getting punched in the face is not the same that got tossed around proudly. One could even misread it as being the same character experiencing the two different types of punishment, as the shadowy tint that is added to the one in the background makes him look like the past state of the man who was sent spinning. A quick glance at their shirts clears up that misconception, as they are different. And if you pay attention to the direction in which their bodies flew, you will also notice that one was thrown sideways, while the other got tossed upwards. While showing the blow is not necessary for this type of movement-based storytelling to function, it can still be implemented to emphasize the nature of the strike that is to be delivered. The issue with blurring out the movements of characters to make them look more dynamic is that there is a certain loss in artistic precision and martial accuracy that occurs due to the now mysterious nature of the attack. When a mangaka overutilizes this trick, the action becomes hard to follow, to the point that some panels become too enigmatic for the reader to be able to follow the progress of the fight. By simply drawing the body part that will be utilized to hit the opponent, the problem is resolved and the explosive development that follows becomes crystal clear. The more abstract movement predictions get, the more skill is required of the author to pull it off. If we break down these panels, we see a shoe moving at high speed towards the ground in the natural direction that a leg that bends inward would take. We then see Baki slamming a man into the ground, with the axis of gravity being deviated to the right. And lastly, we see the reaction of the victim. If we just had the middle panel to look at, we would have been able to fully understand the action. But the addition of those two seemingly superfluous addendums provides the necessary visual information to make the movement come to life. We now know how fast the throw was, the direction in which it went, and the repercussion it had, without cluttering up the page. This gives the author the paradoxical ability to express evolution by freezing time. During that delay, the reader gets the chance to comprehend three different facets of the action. Namely, the past motions that led to it, the present state it resulted in, and the future movements it must consequentially create. Our final tier of representation, that I will call movement suspension, englobes those three stages, and is therefore the type that Itagaki, and most martial arts mangakas, relies the most on. If you close your eyes and try to picture any fighting scene, this is what your imagination is going to land on. It's Sengoku firing a Kamehameha. It's Luffy throwing a punch. It's Jack letting one of his renowned uppercuts explode directly under the opponent's jaw. In short, it is the essence of shonen manga captured in one frame. This crystallization of the action happens either in the middle or at the very beginning of its trajectory and can lead to a stagnancy in its development if overutilized. While containing all of the visual ingredients to convey a message, it can still appear out of sync or make the scene look choppy when utilized in quick succession or without any lead-up. By utilizing it in addition to the other two tiers at a ratio of 60-20-20, this trope becomes able to express the bulk of the action and can provide a series with enough iconic scenes to immortalize the fight in a reader's mind forever. Logic dictates that the moment to be frozen in time will always be the most significant frame of movement out of an entire sequence of motions. It also needs to perfectly encapsulate the energy behind the move, which is often represented by arrows signaling the direction in which the action proceeds, or marks that signify impact. This requires a perfect understanding of how a human body should articulate itself under such duress, or else the drawings wouldn't flow properly, but as always, 
Itagaki's knowledge of anatomy allows for these panels to hit home every single time. This third tier is divided between demonstrations of fighting techniques and depictions of violence, which form the visual identity of the dynamic narrative trope known as combat. Functioning as the traditional one-two punch combo that has permeated the identity of the genre since its genesis, it draws its strength from the very definition of what fighting is in a sense, a body entering a motion that becomes an attack which leads to damage. Even though every single fight in Grapplebaki ends up being an ideological clash between two different types of martial arts, the way in which this struggle for supremacy is expressed ultimately always leads to expressions of unbridled violence. This sentiment can of course be expressed without any punches thrown or blood spilled, as is most often the case during fight build-ups. Its aim is to make the reader apprehensive about an incoming action, rather than tell a story through physical performance. As we discuss the notion of movement in Grapplebaki, it can be pertinent to give a nod to the visual art style that precedes the ignition of a fight. But let us refrain from taking a deep dive, as this will be the center of another video dedicated to the topic of intimidation. For now, we can appreciate the fact that there exists motion even in non-physical face-offs, as waves of animosity take the form of energy that seem to bend the fabric of space and time itself. In most cases, however, the conflict born from the clash of two martial art practitioners will result in violence. As barbaric as this form of media can appear, there is certainly a lot of complexity behind its design, as this video demonstrated. While just about anyone can draw two stick figures going at it and cover the page in red ink to signify bloodshed, making a proper use of the theme is a different beast altogether. Channeling it to tell a story in place keeping in mind not only the manner of its representation, but also the fashion in which it evolves and leads to a conveyance of meaning via the movement of anatomical parts which is a craft that Itagaki has mastered and elevated to the rank of art, as we will discuss in the next episode of this series.